Mystic Michaela spiritual family. Welcome to Know Your Aura with Mystic Michaela today. We are doing something a little different. We are retelling a very famous, very mysterious horror story, the Amityville Horror. What we're doing is we're going to go through it in aura color, a new lens. We have our resident historian, Scott, who has actually prepared. He read a book on it. He has notes. <laughs> he is not messing around. He got his little history hat on, a red aura. He's ready to go. Hey, Scotty. Hey, guys. And this, I just want to preface this by saying this is the first book I've read in all oh, about five years. <laughs> you, it's, you know, the book you read before this was about... The Manson murders. Yeah. It's but I put that I put that down halfway. It was like too detailed. Oh. It was like a police report type book. And okay. It, it was it just didn't go anywhere. Yeah. Um but th- this one I it, it piqued my interest because I grew up on Long Island. Yeah. So this is kind of like somewhat where you're from. You yeah. tell me I mean anytime I talk to Long Islanders, um, they are really weird about what area they live in, uh, like to, to the town or city line, like depend at whenever you ask somebody from Long Island, where did you live? Like they're very specific Yeah, that's and they right. start doing street names like immediately. Yes, yeah, so of course. You know, I am not from Amityville. <laughs> Let's put that out there right away. Okay. I am from Merrick and I'm from middle Merrick. Okay. So there's three yes. parts of Merrick. I found this out. Yes, when your family was visiting a week ago, I had no clue what a class division it was in Long Island. Yeah, you have South Merrick, you got Middle Merrick, and then you have North Merrick. So what's North Merrick? North Merrick is more your like working class, uh, Catholic, um, you know, hardworking. Okay. Okay, and then you have Middle Merrick, that was us. You know, like we're just kind of in the middle, you know, we're, we're middle. And okay. then the <laughs> South, that's on the water. Wada. My Long Island accent is going to come back yeah, here. Yeah, I think you should bring your Long Island accent out for this. Yeah, I can't even say the the, the, the Amityville horror. How do you say it? Horror? Horror? You, I come horror? downstairs and you're like, horror. Horror. I'm like, what? You're like, horror. I'm like, what are you saying? You're like, the Amityville horror. I'm like, horror. 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 Dresser draw. <laughs> Dresser drawer. Okay. Just a drawer. Okay. Like, put it in the draw. Put it in the draw. All right. <laughs> the Amityville Horror. Yeah. I mean, well, the first thing that, you know, that comes to mind with the Amityville Horror book is there was a lot more horrible things on Long Island than this, I think. <laughs> <laughs> you know, living on Long Island, you know, it was rough, you know. Oh, yes. Yeah. Oh, your life was so hard there. Well, I Every mean, time I visited, it was like this beautiful, it was beautiful there. No, first of all, traffic, ridiculous. Right. Traffic was ridiculous. Taxes are ridiculous, although I didn't have to pay them, of course, at that time. Uh, you know, at, at wall car bombs, insurance, wall car bombs, insurance, the, wall the grocery bombs. store. Oh I my remember God. That wall was the bombs. worst grocery store. I remember wall car bombs. insurance. Yeah, yeah was, bad the, car insurance. Yeah. Great Chinese food. You know, Mets fans running around everywhere, Jets fans running around. Weird, weird place to live. <laughs> <laughs> okay. But anyway, yeah. So we had heard of, I had always heard about the Amityville house growing yeah. up. It was like part of the lore, and, you know, we'd always try to find it. And one time we actually did find it, yeah. then we just drove by it and then laughed and moved on with our lives. Of yeah. course, I never knew anything about it. You never saw the movie? Never saw the movie. Okay. You know, all I knew, I, I mean, I knew something had happened in the house that it was haunted, but that was the extent of it. Didn't uh-huh. know anything coming into last week. Right. Um, I feel like with all of this, you know, with this horror story, there's a lot of question of did it happen or didn't it happen? And I feel like that is something that this book and like why I'm, I wanted you to read the book um, because you're kind of good with bias. Yes. Um, and I don't know. Should I, t- I don't want to tell my conclusion right now. No, let's my thoughts, the But end. at the end, I'll tell you. And, and throughout it, you'll probably be able to get my take on it. And I just want to issue a trigger warning there. This is about murders. Children were murdered um, and really just scary stuff. So this is not an episode for little ears today. All right. So let's let's start before the actual haunting. Okay, let's go back. Let's go back. All where, right. where is Amityville? Can you tell me on a map, like about ish, where it is? Uh, you know, like, I, I how prob- far from New York or New- city? Um, I would say it's probably. I mean, everything's like an hour, at least an hour from you know because of the traffic. Yeah, but uh, yeah, it's, pro- it's probably you know I don't really, I think it's South Shore and I think it's like middle of the island. Like is it more going rural? towards the middle? No, it wasn't. I, 
I can't remember if it was Nassau or Suffolk County. One of our listeners probably can tell us yeah, that. Yeah, somebody but in Long Island's like, it, this is the street it's on. No, it, yeah, it's still <laughs> – uh, no, I know the street it was on in Amityville, but um, it's like middle. Affluence? Yeah, there's parts of it that are very affluent. Okay. The area that they moved into, this house was very affluent. Okay. It's on the uh, Amityville River, very okay. affluent area. Okay, yeah. So just so you have like a, a like a typical like American suburb. Yes. Got it. Okay, yeah. so take us back. All right. So the, the year is 1974. Mm-hmm. Little Scotty had not been born yet. <laughs> the date is November 13th. Okay. 112 Ocean Avenue. Mm-hmm. No nope. one point off from 1111, Whoa. right? Like my birth, you know. Yes. Yeah, this all makes sense here. All right, so 112 Ocean Avenue, Amityville, Long Island. Ronald Defoe, okay, he goes on a rampage with a high-powered rifle, and he kills his two parents, his two brothers, and his two sisters, that's the, that's the claim in court. There is dispute on that, whether he had accomplices with him, whether the sisters helped. But basically, Mono Defoe in this house, in the Amityville Horror House, kills six people. How old is he at this time-ish? I, I think he's he – I'm was, not exactly sure. I think he's, he's young. I think he's in it close to 20s. Yeah, because in the picture – so I have pictures of everybody we're going to be talking about today and I did, don't know much about this except just the skeleton version of what happened in this. So when I'm looking at his picture, yeah, like it is – when he got arrested, he looks like maybe 20. Yeah, I thought – I think he's early 20s. Yeah, he looks very young. And what's interesting to me about him – so he, he took a gun and he just shot his whole family and the, and the little kids too. Yes, his two little sisters, two brothers, and the parents. And the one little boy was really young, wasn't he? Yes. Okay. So what's interesting to me is when I look at his picture, and this is um, – and j- everything we're saying today are just our own thoughts. And obviously these are just our own thoughts and what we think and think, and it's not just all allegedly, all that kind of stuff. But when I look at him, there's this blank look. And it's the same look I get um, when I saw him for the first time in this picture that I just screenshotted for this podcast. I'm like, he looks like the Parkland shooter to me. So if you down in South Florida, there was this horrific shooting. One of my one of my dear friends was actually a teacher at the time in the building when it happened. Just awful. And the Parkland and the, the shooter. I don't even like to say his actual name. The shooter has this look. It's the same look as Defoe. It's and when I saw the shooter. And I see this guy, it's kind of like a vacant expression to me. And I don't hear you look at it. Do you see what I'm saying? Because I don't know sometimes if I'm getting something psychic or it's something that anybody could kind of pick up. I mean, I'm getting a creepy vibe from him. Okay. It's kind of, and Manson gives me the same vibe too. It's like, it's vacant. It's like they left the building and something else can come in. That's not good. I truly believe, I believe in this world, there's good and evil. And we have to choose it every day. And some people completely vacate themselves and allow evil to drive that bus. And that's what that feels like to me. Like he's not present. I can't even give him an aura color. You can't, okay, you can't. I can't because to me, it's just like looking in an abyss. So, so it's the same vibe I get from the Parkland shooter. Wow. So like you there can't, is no you can't aura. see an aura? There? there is no aura. There is no aura. No. And then I saw, I wanted to see, okay, let's look at him when he was younger. Okay. Okay. So I got pictures of him when he was, he looks about like nine, all right? He's very sensitive. So there's a green-blue thing going on. Where did that go? See, and I get the same thing from, I had. I hate to keep comparing him, but like to the Parkland shooter. like, And sometimes other shooters too, like when in this awful day and age, like you get to see them on the news. And like obviously it's the first thing I notice as a person, like what this vacant look is every once in a while if I see it. And it's almost like he left. He's not there because really? the aura in this little kid, he does feel like a very affected child. If I was reading this kid and nothing happened and I was like reading mom, you know, and we're talking about her son, I'd be like, you got to watch him for psychological issues. I mean, that's what I would say. Like, I'm not a doctor, but there's just something here. It's almost like... It's all, how do I put this? It's almost like it's a temporary, hmm, I don't know how to say it. It's like you, you can unwrap him very easily. Most people you cannot unwrap, like 99.9% of us cannot be unwrapped very easily. Unwrapped meaning like 
taken away from ourselves so something else can enter. So I would worry about him with psychological issues and I would tell the mom, hey, be on top of that, take him somewhere. So I feel like his energy just left him and he became evil. Wow. So so he, when he was a child, he was green and blue. Yes. And then you're saying when he did these murders. Yeah. And now this picture, I assume, is after he had done the yes, murders. Yes, this is him in court. There, you don't see an aura. There's no aura. That's it's crazy. It's an abyss. That's it's crazy. like an abyss. Yeah. And sometimes it's like looking at so something would he, else. So you're saying like an evil force, a demonic force could have came into him yeah. and possibly encouraged this. Because I felt that. He couldn't pull the trigger though. I, I, ex- listen, I am not excusing behavior no, I know. at all. You know how I feel about like shooters and the Parkland shooter and all that. It's just without giving you... I can only tell you what I see and yeah. what I feel. Right. And then you all, everybody else can make their own thought. This is not my opinion. This is just what I see and feel. I feel like the same thing like with that shooter, they they step aside and something else comes, comes into their in. body. Wow. Did they let them do that? Did they let somebody do that? Yeah, they let that happen. We all make, we're very, we have to be personally responsible for our choices. Okay. And I really feel like you can check out, but it's hard to do it, but you can check out. If your life is awful enough, that's the other thing. I feel like that contributes to it, and I don't know if I'm jumping ahead of myself, but... No, no, that's good, because, okay. you know, I did a little research on that, too, you know, what would, you know, trying to figure out what would make this guy do it. Yeah. I also want to do add, and we can talk about it a little bit later on, that the defense eventually is going to use that to try to, you know, get Ronald Defoe lesser sentence by saying that someone, something influenced him to do oh, these murders. Oh, really? Yeah, we can talk about that a little later, though. Okay. But, um... Yeah, there was a lot that the parents were were awful, that the parents were mean to the children. There are claims that maybe the sister helped him do the murders. Okay. Uh, it was weird because all the bodies were in the same position, so what do you they mean? were all flat on their stomach. So when he shot them, they, they were all in yeah, bed, you're in saying? In bed. And, yeah, we assume that they were in bed uh, or, or maybe he had help putting them in that position. Well, the I don't know. Examiner they said no, know. but yeah, they said no. That's the thing. They know if you shoot somebody and move them, the medical examiners can tell those yeah. things. And they said that they were, so they, so that's really yeah, weird. Five of the six were shot in the back. I'm not going to tell you who was shot in the head. Okay. That's, that's going to come a little later on. Okay. But five of the six were shot in the back. And then the, all of them, I believe all of them were laying flat on their stomachs, like in their back, in their beds that's when weird. they found them. weird. On their stomachs. Yeah. And they were sleeping when it happened? That Yes. I mean, that's what they, the police reports claim. Again, there is theories that possibly there was helpers. Maybe the sister helped. Well, okay. That so was what also happened? Killed. So he killed everybody. Okay. And then what did he do? Like, he how went, did anybody find out he killed oh, okay. everybody? So he killed everyone. Then he went, I believe it was across the street or a block or two away to a bar okay. and told everybody. Oh, that he did it? Yeah. <laughs> So he was nuts. Yeah. Yes, okay. Yeah. He was nuts. Okay. Um, you, I also looked up the picture of this guy's parents. The father? The father gives me very not great vibes. So him as a child, he also feels like he has a dad issue, which I'll get if somebody doesn't have a great relationship with their own father and they feel um, very shut out, like they're too sensitive or dad doesn't understand them or they're being picked on a lot like that. Dad is not, I mean, again, I don't know him. This is just my psychic take. He doesn't feel like um, a very nice person. He's got a very angry red aura. Red aura. Right. Yeah. So to me, his energy is extremely um, volatile. So if he, if there was, I don't know, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be surprised just from my, my experience with reading people if this was like a house where there was a lot of, Verbal, emotional, perhaps even maybe physical altercations from parents. I can see that. Um, he just feels like he's very old school, but also very, like, could be angry. Um, sometimes I also get this feeling when somebody drinks too much or something and acts out uh, really nastily because of it. Um, so I just wanted to add that, too. Not that anything's an excuse. It's just something to, to note. Yeah. I mean, and again, I guess this is going to go back to, is this something in the house? <sighs> I'm not sure, but first, we're going to do an ad from Osea. It can be so hard to find skincare products with clean, simple ingredients that actually work, that you completely fall in love with. Well, look no further because Osea has been making these exact clean and effective skincare products for over 25 years. 
Lately, I've been using Osea's Hyaluronic C Serum, and wow, it has been doing wonders on my skin. I put it on in the morning. It makes me feel soft and bouncy and hydrated, all that in just one little bottle. Unlike other hyaluronic serums, Osea's is clinically proven to instantly increase hydration and is anti-aging. I mean, you can feel it as soon as you put it on. The appearance of all lines diminish, wrinkles, crow's feet, laugh lines, frown lines. This is really a must-have in your routine. I put it on before I put on makeup. It's made such a difference. Since 1996, Osea has been created clean, vegan, and cruelty-free products that are safe for your skin and the planet. Not sure what to buy? I'll tell you what to do. Just grab one of their discovery sets, and you can try multiple products at once. Their best seller's discovery set, and this is a great gift for your friends, it includes four of Osea's best-selling products. For just $40, you can try a cleanser, serum, moisturizer, and their amazing body oil, okay? Let's not even, don't even get me started on their body oil. You'll never go back. It's an incredible value that saves you over $20. So find your new skincare favorites at Osea malibu.com and get a special discount just for our listeners you get 10 percent off your first order with promo code kya at oseamalibu.com you'll get free samples with every order and orders over 50 dollars get free shipping you're going to want it all go to osea o-s-e-a malibu.com and use code kya Hey, Scotty. Hey, guys. So now we're getting into the supernatural portion of this story. Take it away. Okay. So, again, the murders happened November 13th, 1974, and now we're going to fast forward to December 18th, 1975. All right. So the house is on the market. It costs about 80 grand at that time, which was was just steel. This house is, by the way, like a mansion. Okay. And today, you know, this would be a multi-million dollar house on Long Island in that position. Mm -hmm. I don't even know how many millions if this, I guess, didn't happen. But anyway, for 80 grand, the Lutz family decides that they're going to move in. Okay, so it's George Lutz, who's the dad, Kathy Lutz, who is the mom, and then Kathy has three kids, uh, Chris, Danny, and Missy. Okay, so George is the stepdad to Chris, Danny, and Missy. So the five of them uh, move in, all right? Um, They are Catholic. They want to get the house blessed. The first, I guess, sign here is they call upon a priest to come, a fam, you know, a member of, the, you know, like a family priest. How Catholic were they? Super. I, I think they were pretty, pretty Catholic. Usually, like, just because growing up Catholic, you can get a priest come bless your house, but usually you just do it yourself. Yeah, I, I mean. In the book, it says, and there's a little bit it's just sketchiness. Weird, it's just weird to me. Yeah, it's a little sketchiness. It's weird that you just go, I mean, that's why I'm like, how Catholic are you? Because you can just take holy water and do it yourself. Yeah, they, I mean, they claimed in the book that he was like a friend of the family. Okay. That he had come over a few times, maybe a couple dinners that's with him. that's in the book. That's in the book. And right. then in the book, they use a different name for the priest that um, then, blesses the house. Than in actuality did. Yeah, than in actuality. Okay, all right, go ahead. Yeah, so anyway, the big line here is he goes into the house, he, he claims he has this bad feeling, and then he hears uh, two words, get out. Whoa. Yeah. That um, scares me. Yeah. I mean, that happened to me when we did the uh, house in Fort Lauderdale. Yes, it did. And they told me to get out. Yeah. So, but, so I heard that. All right, so it's possible. And then basically his story – he has like a whole storyline in the book as well okay. where you know he gets ill right after. He has like car troubles after. Like The priest does? The priest does, yeah. Okay. Uh, he's got like weird boils come on his hands at times. Okay. All these weird things happen to him. Right. He's trying to – you know, he keeps – you know, they have him asking, you know, the – Higher ups of the church, what should he do? Should he go there and bless the house again? Because the the family wants him to come back, and they tell him no, you can, you have to stay away. So he's got this other whole storyline going on, okay. where all these weird things are happening to him all right. that is trying to keep him away from the house. They like this whatever's in the house doesn't want this doesn't guy want there. He doesn't there. want the priest there. Okay, but that's a whole other storyline in the book. Um, all right, so we, we go right to December nineteenth. So. Again, this is the account that the Lutzes told mm-hmm. the writer of the book whose name is Jay Anson. All right. So this, was, this was their account. This is what they said had happened, and they do it uh, by date. So they, they started on December 18th, and they're only there for 28 days. 28 days later, they're out of the house. 
but it goes just by day by day account. All right. So there basically something happens like every day to them. So they they move in and twenty eight days later they move out. Twenty eight days are out. Oh, this yeah. brand new house that they just moved into. How many kids do they have? They have three. Three children. Three children. And they're young. And they're young. All right. So I think like that's that's telling that they left. You know, yeah. if you think like anybody who has three kids, like moving's not fun, you know. Yeah. Okay. It's, that makes sense. Yeah. All right. All right. So the first, the first thing that starts to happen is in the early days, let's, you know, call it from like December 19th to December 24th, so the the Christmas first Eve. Week-ish. First week ish. Yeah. All we'll right. go through that. And again, there, I could be wrong on a little bit on a date here or something that might have happened on a mm-hmm. different date. I, I apologize for that. Uh, the first thing is the personality changes in George, mm. the father. Uh, he's, he starts not shaving. He doesn't shower. Um, he gets lazy. He doesn't want to do anything. He's, he doesn't go to work anymore for that week. He decides to take the week off from work. But again, he just moved, right? Uh, he is always freezing. He claims he's always cold, even though the house is usually – and they, they really talk about the temperature of the house a lot in the book. Uh, the, t- the temperature is always like 75, 78 degrees in the house, but he's always freezing. He's always creating this fire, and he's always sitting by the fire. And he's always saying how cold it is, how cold it is, how cold it is. And then he starts getting a little, um, I don't know, agitated. The, the wife, Kathy, claims that, you know, he was never nasty to the kids, but now he starts to get nasty to the kids when they do little things. Um, I think at one point, I, I do remember, I think that he actually either, you know, hit them or scolded them. So he's taking on a, a personality change is what he's claiming. And again, like you said earlier, the father that had been killed was kind of like a nasty... Red, you said, who yeah. kind of might have beat them or... Yeah, there's some, something was going on there. Right. So that, that was right off the bat. Like the, the wife claims, you know, he showers every day. He used to, you know, comb, you know, shave every day and now he was not doing so that. So a massive person. I mean, that could be depression. That could be like a lot of different things, but... Right. right. Yeah. I mean, like it's a lot of stress, you know, moving from where they were, I think they were in Deer Park, Long Island. They're moving, you know, not going to work. But she might, feels like time. it's deeper than that. It's alarming. It's alarming, All but right. there's at that point, I don't think they're thinking anything supernatural. Mm-hmm. There's no talk of that at this point. Yeah, It's actually weird how long they go before they think it's like hauntings and stuff. Oh, but really? anyway, yeah. I feel like immediately. I feel like, <laughs> please, it's haunted. <laughs> let's get out. <laughs> yeah. Um, they do start to, to see weird things and feel weird things. So they, um, ha- house flies. Like there's one room in the house. It's called the sewing room. And there's like massive amounts of flies yeah. on one of the windows. Oh, that's remember it's winter time. Not so. like from didn't that happen in Exorcist or something? Yeah, yeah it seems it, like it sounds like every movie. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So house flies constantly in this one room, and then they would leave. Mm-hmm. Then they would come back. Oh. Then they would leave. Um, smells of perfume would kind of go throughout the house. Well, that's a big spirit thing. That could be a spirit thing. Uh, they claimed that there was a black tar. In all the toilets. Like a weird substance. A weird substance coming out of the toilets. Mm. And they had to like clean them and they just couldn't get them clean. Water issues are usually a sign of spirit activity in haunted houses and stuff. Every time I read – usually like if I read a very active house, there's been a lot of plumbing issues. Okay. So it's it could, just like a thing. All right. I remember this is an old house, so it could be you – know, well, it could water, be something. It could, of course, it's some, it could be something. Yeah. I mean obviously. It's just something that I noted. That's, that's interesting to me because like water is such a conduit for spirit. So I don't know. If you ever think like you've taken a shower in an old house, like you can get kind of more messages that way. If, you know, it, it's just, it, yeah, that, yeah. that tracks. Okay. All right. So all these things, windows opening and closing. Oh, really? Yeah. Windows opening and closing, you know. And here's the, the one thing. And again, we have to take his word at it. Mm-hmm. But George would wake up during this time every single morning at 3.15 a.m. Okay. Okay. So every morning he claims that he wakes up from some noise or some sound. Yeah. Um, that's at like three. That's like all of us listening. Like we always get, like I just got up at three yesterday. Like every night. Yeah. But all right. but why why did he notice that? Okay. Like, so that is significant, and I guess he didn't know it at that time. Oh, he didn't know it. Yeah, he wouldn't have known it at the time. But uh, the police report claims that uh, Defoe killed. The parents and the and the kids at three fifteen a.m. in the morning. So he was okay. That's interesting. Yeah. So that was the time that they placed the the murders. Did this book come out after those police reports? This book, yeah. I mean, not. I don't know if all the information had come out. Yeah. But that's po- that's possible. Okay. I mean, right. I, I would think in the newspaper it would have said that uh, the family was killed roughly around three fifteen in the morning. Yes. Yes, that would have been in the newspaper. Just those things. All right. I, should I look at his picture now? Yeah. You want to look at George? Let me look at George. 
What's interesting about George is I have some pictures of him like after this whole thing and kind of like before this whole thing or whatever. I will say, remember what I said about, I guess, Robert, the one that killed his family, how he had that feeling of being easily unwrapped. Uh, Ronald, you're talking about. Ronald, sorry. Oh my gosh, Ronald, sorry. Yeah. You know how I had that feeling about like the child Ronald versus adult Ronald? Adult Ronald already unwrapped. There's no aura there. Child Ronald, danger. And I would say something like psychological issues or there's something that has to be addressed quickly here with, with this child. That's the feeling I get in George. Like if I, when I look at him, he feels to me like he is a bit self-serving. He feels like he could have some psychological stuff going on. Not that psychological stuff makes you do anything. This is not supposed to be. I mean, I don't want to like hurt anyone's feelings here. You know what I mean? I just get there's something off with him. It does feel like something's off with him. Having said that, he's not, he's with it, you know? Like, yeah, well, he's with it. So does he, okay, so this, what picture are you looking at first? I'm looking at this one. Okay, that's it's when. It's black and white one. That's after. That's after. Okay, what her, does he have an aura? Yeah, this one, honestly, he feels like he wants to make some money. Okay. I mean, and, and, and you know, I, I love the paranormal and I believe in a lot of this stuff and I'll, and I'll give you what my interpretation is after this too so far. But like looking at him, he's with it. He wants to make some money. He would, it would capitalize off of anything at this point. And to me, he feels like he's self-serving. Like he doesn't care. Like like he he will say what he needs to say to get what he needs to get done. What what are his colors at he, that in that picture? He's he's got he's green and blue. Green and so blue. So it's interesting because he's same aura color. Mm-hmm. You know, um. So he's green and blue. And in the pictures, like after, because there's like some documentary, like way after. See this one? Yeah. He's very very green. Very green. with the blue kind of like faded away. Okay. So. And the wife, they got divorced or something, right? Kathy. Yeah. She, to me, feels silent. She reminds me a lot of, who's the one, the, the wife who got killed? The mom. What uh, was her name? Yeah, I don't have the name of her. Yeah. The mom that the son killed, they feel the same energy to me. It's really? like a yellow-blue vibe. Yellow-blue. Okay. Yeah. And so very silent, silenced, and silent. Silent and silenced. Those are the words I get around her. Okay. Like silent, silenced, and moving on. All right. Well, on. this is really interesting that you say this. Okay. So two two things. Let's, we'll take – again, this is – now we're going to go into the time period from like December 25th to 28th. Okay. So for we'll take George first because you mentioned him first. So George, at, according to the book, uh, claims that he went into that the bar that uh, Ronald Defoe went to after he had killed the family. Okay. And the bartender – Kind of gave him like a weird glance, a weird view, because the bartender at, at one point thought that it was Ronald Defoe. Wow! And that um, he had mistaken George for for Ronnie Defoe, which is weird because as you said they have the same green blue aura going on. If you look at pictures of them, they also look fairly similar. They do, and they both had a beard. Right. That's interesting. He wasn't shaving because Ronnie Ronald Defoe had, had a beard. Right. And George. Had a beard too, but yeah. you said he didn't, and then he moved in, and he did. Yeah, so I mean, the, so the claim is maybe it's also spirit, like the this, the energy is the, the same energy. too. Maybe you're picking up the same energy. Yeah, it seemed, and so were other people. Yeah, it seems like with George, he could have been a danger for doing something worse, right? For sure. Okay. Like, but in the pictures afterwards, I feel like he just kind of like nah, shrugged it off, and eh, let's let's capitalize off this, right? Like after. that, like kind of his um. Maybe his 3D mentality saved him, honestly. <laughs> you know, like his 3D mentality, like, you know what? Let's make money. Like, let's let's tell the story. Like, let's get what we can off of this experience. Saved him from going, being completely taken over by whatever energy is going on in this home. Does that make sense? Yeah, that makes sense. Like, but- that might have actually kind of like his own self-centeredness. <laughs> Because he feels a little self. I don't know if he was a selfish person. He feels a little selfish to me. Like he thinks about himself first and everybody else second. Okay. Which is different. You know, usually fathers and mothers, are, you're not supposed to be like that. But that's what he feels like to me. That, okay. That's interesting. All right. And now let's take Kathy, who you also said was the same as yeah, the, the, they're the, same the wife that was killed. Yeah. So on December 25th, Kathy wakes up and screams. 
she was shot in the head. Oh my god, creepy, right? Yeah, she was shot that in the gave head. me chills. Yeah. Now, at now at this point, this had not been released. The claim was this had not been released to the public. The okay. media did not know that the wife was shot in the head. Okay. Everyone had thought it was just everyone was in the back, shot in the back. But the wife actually was shot in the head. Now, on December 25th, 1975, that was not information that the public would have had. Wow. Uh, I don't know when that information was released. Mm. But again, Kathy screaming, she was shot in the head. Well, she's making like a connection. So maybe she was taking on that energy. Yeah. yeah. So far, I feel like... Honestly, a horrible thing happened in that house. And what happened is is that they're trying to connect to these people to to just communicate. And a lot of times if you don't make the paranormal normal, <laughs> what can happen is you think it's evil or something. My thought is that these people were just trying to like reach out to the to anybody they could. Like the wife, I mean the mom and and the kids. We're really trying to reach out in any way they could just to communicate something. And that, that can happen. Yeah. All right. Well, you're getting creepy here. Okay. Now we're going to be introduced to a new character on December 25th. Missy, the little girl, okay. is claiming an imaginary friend. Oh, no. Now, most kids do this. Oh, no. But when we come back, we got a couple of ads. When we come back, we're going to find out about the imaginary friend. What if you could use science to discover more about your body all year long? Give yourself more clarity and better understand your health and wellness with Everly at Home Lab Tests. Everly at Home Lab Tests give you physician-reviewed results and personalized insights so you can take action on your health and wellness all at an affordable and transparent cost. With over 30 tests, you'll be able to choose the ones that make the most sense for you. Food sensitivity, metabolism, sleep and stress, and thyroid are just a few of the many options. Here's how it works. Everly Well ships your at-home lab test straight to you with everything needed for a simple sample collection. Using the prepaid shipping label, mail your test back to a certified lab. In just days, your physician-reviewed results and actionable insights are sent to your device and... You can share the results with your primary care physician to help you be guided to your next steps. Over 1 million people have trusted Everly Well with their at-home lab testing. I was having food issues like bloating and uncomfortableness. I wasn't quite sure. Took the food sensitivity test. Wow, what an eye-opener. Great first steps to me being under, to understand how my body works and what I can and cannot eat. Um, and for listeners of our show, Everly Well is offering a special discount of 20% off an at-home lab test at everlywell.com slash KYA. That's everlywell.com slash KYA for 20% off your at-home lab test. That's everlywell.com slash KYA. This podcast is sponsored by BetterHelp Online Therapy. We talk about BetterHelp a lot on the show, and this month we're discussing some of the stigmas around mental health. We've been taught that mental health shouldn't be part of a normal life, but that's wrong. We take care of our bodies with the gym, the doctor, and nutrition. We should be focusing on our minds just as much. Nothing makes me feel better than my weekly call with my BetterHelp professional therapist. Every week I do this over the phone and it's just incredible insight and reflection that helps me to feel better, feel safer, feel more listened to, all those things. BetterHelp is customized to online therapy that offers video, phone, and even live chat sessions with your therapist. You don't have to see anyone on camera if you don't want to. It's much more affordable than in-person therapy, and you can be matched with a therapist in under 48 hours. It's very quick. Give it a try and see why over 2 million people have used BetterHelp online therapy. This podcast is sponsored by BetterHelp, and Know Your Aura listeners get 10% off their first month at betterhelp.com slash KYA. That's betterhelp, B-E-T-T-E-R-H-E-L-P.com slash KYA. Hey, Scotty. Hey, guys. Okay, so what about that imaginary friend? All right, so Missy, who I believe was about five at the time, had an imaginary friend. Now, most kids at age five did. I know Abby had, uh, who was her imaginary friend that Abby had? Uh, what was that? Harold? Her- no, it wasn't Harold. Oh, oh, yeah, oh. she let him go. Yeah, whatever happened to that I guy? I don't know. He, he was actually one of our Netflix characters. Bob was? Gerald. Bob, Bob Ger- Gerald. Bob Gerald. He's on our Netflix account. Yeah. So yeah. Most, I'm assuming most kids had an imaginary <laughs> friend. All right, so Missy had Jody the pig. Okay. Jody the pig. Now, it's a debate if it is a pig or not. Um, George, at times throughout the book, claims to see uh, 
hoof marks in the snow because, again, remember it's winter time, there's a lot of snow in the area. Uh, he claims that he saw eyes of a pig staring at him through the window. Was the place a farm? There, it could have been possibly at, at one time in its history. All right. There, there was claims of that. Yes, um, the 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 theory possibly, and we can get to this again a little bit later on, was that uh, demons can to make themselves more how do you say friendly towards children. You know, yeah. could take the shape of an animal. Who says that? That's what they were saying. Okay, but. All right, so now we have this Jody the Pig character. <laughs> okay. And she's constantly talking to him. The mom, of course, thinks it's just an imaginary friend. Right. George, I don't know. Maybe, you know, he's claiming he sees pig tracks in the book and he's right. claiming to see pig's eyes and everything. So here's another interesting thing. At this time, so now we're, just, we're right after Christmas, December okay. 26th, like their second December week 28th. There. Yeah. Uh, the day after Christmas, they have to go to their brother, uh, Kathy's brother's wedding. And George okay. is the best man. So George's brother-in-law. Yeah. I also okay. want to say at this time, George has not gone to work since then. He, was his own, he works for himself. He has his own business. Um, he's like an inspector of homes and things like that. And they, there is talk in the book of money issues and mm. the IRS actually was coming down to his office wondering where he was okay. because, yeah. uh, you know, the, to look at the books, maybe an audit was going on at the time as well. And he's not really handling it. So the brother-in-law comes over getting ready for the wedding, and he has $1,500. Again, this is all in the book. I didn't make this up. It's, and he, he has to pay that to the caterer for the wedding. Okay. Okay. He, the claim is he takes the money out, shows it to Kathy, and then puts it into his suit pocket. They can't find the money after that. Oh. Money disappears. Okay. So the $1,500, they're looking all around the house, Kathy calls George down. George says, what's the matter? They said they can't find the $1,500. What are they going to do? They can't pay the caterer. And George just says, I'll take care of it. I'll take care of it. Mm. So I don't know what was going on there with the $1,500. That's, that's in the book. Oh, yes. really? That's in the account. Okay. Yeah. And then George you know, basically claims in the book that he made good with the caterer. He wrote a check. And <laughs> I don't know. It, it, that was a little fishy. Yeah. He was talking about like, couple accounts he had, putting money into this account so that check would okay, clear. so he sounds like he's not great financially. Yeah, it's, it sounds at this time the finances are not going well as yeah. well. I just want to put that out there. Okay. So uh, again, yeah, I, I don't know. What, he didn't have to add that to the account either, but he did. Um, you mean the author or George? Well, George, I guess, didn't yeah. have to add that to the account either, but he did. Yeah. All right, so Again, all these weird things keep happening. But he's also having money problems. He's having money problems. Yeah, he's things aren't going great. For not him. going to work. Okay. IRS is on his tail. Right. All these things are happening. Payroll. He's trying to make payroll. He's, he's talking about how you know he doesn't know if he's going to make payroll this month and all these things. All right. So and again, all the weird stuff's happening. Doors keep opening, windows keep shutting and opening, and all this thing. The flies keep coming back, and all this is happening. So December 29th to December 30th. George decides that he is going to look into the history here to see if there's anything really going on. So right. he goes down, I think, to the, I don't know, the Amityville newspaper headquarters sure. or something. Yeah, back then that's what you did. Yeah, yeah, you did that. You got those weird... Old newspapers. Yeah, you get those and, films. I forgot what those films yeah, were called. Those? You yeah. put them on the screen, whatever. So this is what he finds out. Okay, so one, he finds out Shinnecock Indians. Okay. They used to live on the land that the house was. Okay. Okay. Uh, they apparently, according to George's research, used it for an enclosure for sick, mad, and dying people. How did, like, that's documented somewhere? That's what he claims when he looked up mm. in uh, the newspapers, I, I guess. if anybody looked into that. Okay. Yeah. So he claims that the land was used for the sick, the dying, the weak, all that, and then they would be left, they'd be penned up, and then they would die of exposure. Great. And then, so that's- all these deaths. So the uh, land is just not cool. The land is not cool. But All right. He also said that the Shinnecocks believed that the land uh, was not suit for burial. So they did not really? bury the dead there because they claimed that it was infested with demons. Oh, great. Yeah. I so, mean, I, yeah. So George is just like, he's just an unreliable narrator. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, that's the, my only problem with this so far. Right. Like, what... Okay, but okay. continuing on. I mean, we could possibly. I mean, that's something that we could easily look up and see if, they, if that was and they true. Did, and the Shinnecock Indians did live in that area. It is true. Um, they lived all over, though. Yeah. They? yeah. Well, in that part of Long Island. But that part, yeah. What's what you never want to deal with 
is Native American stuff. Yeah. Like, I know that. Remember when we went to Custer's Last Stand in Montana? That's in Montana, right? Yes. We went to the Custer's Last Stand, the, that memorial. Yes. I mean, that was such a heavy energy there. Like, I remember feeling sick. And remember when we were in um, California and I was so sick on that one road? Like, I got yeah. so nauseous and I started vomiting. You remember that? Mulholland Drive. And I'm like, what is wrong? What is wrong here? And we looked it up. There was like a huge battle with Native Americans there. A lot of them died, yeah. like, defending that area. And a lot of people dying on that road as well from like car crashes. And it's things. a very like haunted. I didn't know that. No. You know what I mean? And yeah. I was like, really. So I completely believe that land holds energy. Um, yeah, with intention. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, there's been a lot of claims. Psychics have come into the building, the house, sorry, and claim that um, uh, Montauk, Montauk is way out on Long Island, Chief roams the house, but that was kind of shot down because the Montauk Indians weren't in that part yeah, that's like, of Long Island. Yeah. So, you know, they're, okay. Now, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I, I mean, sure. <laughs> All right. The other thing, the other thing that was said was this guy named John uh, Ketchum, or could go by John Ketchum, uh, was for he, – he used to live in Salem, Salem, Massachusetts. He was kicked out of Salem, Massachusetts for practicing witchcraft and supposedly he moved to that land where the Amityville house was. Really? Wow. And, yeah, and he was buried on that property. So So when was this, like in 1600s? Yeah, it must have been around that time, sure. Yeah, oh, wow. somewhere sometime in the 1600s. Uh, he had passed, and then they buried him there. So he had, and the claim was that he continued to do his witchcraft on that uh, land, that territory. Uh, we did pull up a picture of John Cadham, uh, and what'd you get from that? Well, there's no actual photographs, but there's renderings of him. So if I can't see an actual photograph, I can't see somebody's aura. But with paintings and renderings, or art, I try to read like the art artists, I guess energy that they painted them with, or whatever. So it's just very shadowy and hooded and obviously like the energy is not very trustworthy or something mysterious or a darkness about him. So like this isn't like a positive portrayal they're giving of this person, but what what's his deal? Yeah, so I mean with the witchcraft, what, what, would you could you pick up any colors or anything or no? It's, it's impossible. more just kind of like a vibe. Like I get maybe kind of like a green, another green thing going on, um, very like maybe purple, um, which for that time I think anybody with a purple aura <laughs> if they had it out would have probably been called a witch. Yeah. You know, if you were just like a little bit purple, like – back then they would have been like witch you know so he didn't hide it that's it and i like i said i can't see colors from a rendering but i can get the vibe from what the artist is trying to show in their rendering if the, okay so it's kind of like the guy didn't hide his like his eccentricity okay that makes sense okay. all right i mean again there, uh, there's a lot of claims that it happened a lot of claims he he was there a lot of claims that he wasn't there yeah. so there's a lot of mystery around that too some people say he opened up the portal, you know, for the demons to come through. Who knows? All right. All right. Let's move on from there. So January okay. 3rd. So just the land is a little wonky. wonky yeah. Okay. I mean, that, that's what we're kind of gathering from Right. This. All right. So January 3rd in the book. Okay. So finally, Kathy asks the question. Oh, Kathy. Okay. Yeah, Kathy. Mother <laughs> Kathy. She does seem like kind of quiet about things. I will say in her aura, she seems kind of like, well, you know, some of those people you got to hit the space bar a while to turn him on, like, hello, hello, hello. Like, she does seem a little yeah. bit like that. So, okay. <laughs> all right. So it, might, it took her to January 3rd. There's black tar in the toilets. Yeah, stuff. all those things have happened. Yeah, okay, there's a pig. All right, right. magic all right. pig. Kathy's like, hmm. Doors are flying off the handle, whatever, flies, everything. Oh, what, what's with the doors? Perfumes, crazy sounds. Okay. Okay. All right. And this is what was the quote. Do you think this house is haunted by what? Whoa. <laughs> Good job, Kathy. Yeah, so this is January 3rd. Okay. And again, we've gone through all these things so far like, that have hmm. happened. And you're like, do you think the house is haunted? I mean, yeah. Okay. I mean, at least some sort of haunting. But all right. things really do get crazy between that time period and like January 12th. So this is like all between like New Year's Eve and New Year's Day and uh, – January 12th. So now the house knows, oh, they're on to us. Yeah. Kathy's on to us. Let's get going. Right. And All right. Just like in any like horror movie or anything, it starts speeding up now. Yeah. And more, it's like, like every you know, horror movie. Yeah. You ever see like, you know, like Poltergeist? Yeah. Oh, that one terrified me. By or the Haunting way. in Connecticut. Yeah. Really so it like starts too. off slow, like a door opens. Yes. And then a window opens. Yeah. And then, you know, something moves across the table. 
And then all of a sudden, <laughs> yeah, that happening. is like the demon show up. All right, okay. So this is where everything's happening now. So right. now what do you get? You get uh, the claims of levitation that oh. Kathy rises up from the bed. <laughs> Does she know she's doing it? No, because she's entranced. Stop. She's like in a trance. Kathy. Um, okay. Yeah. There's uh, lines that are being drawn on her face. Ooh. And like she looks in the mirror and she sees like these black lines. Oh, that's and scary. Yeah. Dysmorphia going on here. Oh, they're messing uh, with her skin yeah. care. When Danny's hand gets crushed in a window. How old's Danny at this time? Ish. Ish. I'm not sure. I think he's the oldest of the three, but again, young boy. Okay. Uh, they take him to the emergency room and then his hands are pretty much fine. Oh. So, yeah. Okay. That's the claim. Um, you know, people will not step foot in the house, you know, neighbors, relatives. Nobody wants to go they in. Don't want it's to not go welcoming. In. Um, George claims that there's a marching band that plays every night. So every night. He hears a marching band. Oh, I don't know. That's freaky. That's freaky. Uh, that's like very specific. It's very specific. See, that's like, like some of it's like very general and some of it's like who came up with that stuff. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Uh, they try bringing in a, a psychic mm. who, you know, just basically runs out of the house. <laughs> that would be me. <laughs> like, <yeah>. nope. <laughs> Again, anything you'd see in any horror movie. Okay. That happens. The continuation of, of course, the money problems. Um, okay. So that's all going on. All right. All right. January 13th is when it kind of all culminates. This Ooh. would be, you know, that last scene in the movie. The where, last, the last 20 it? minutes of the movie. Okay. Yes. <laughs> right. <laughs> so now they finally, it's like, you know what? We've had enough. You know, after doors have flown off the, you know, the hinges and the windows and everything, they're like, we're leaving. Okay. So, of course, there's a storm. <gasps> so there's a big what? storm. Yeah, it's a big storm. Okay. A lot of storms in this book, by the way. Uh, every day there's like a storm. Oh. Uh, but... Big storm, and of course they're all like, "All right, we're leaving. We're out of here. No more." They get into the family van, and you know what happens? Car doesn't start. Car does not start. But they're not like in the middle of nowhere. Like, is right. there they, a bar across? Yeah, the they could have walked to the bar. <laughs> <laughs> right. Like, so come on. Okay. They, you know, they make the claim like the house doesn't want us to leave. Yeah, but you could just call a cab. Okay, yeah. but okay. All right. <laughs> so they go back to the house, of course, <laughs> and then it, you know, then it all breaks loose. Uh, green slime, they claim, is coming out of the walls well, all over the place. Like Ghostbusters going on lot. here. Yeah. Uh, forces are grabbing them, like right. clutching them. Um, and then they see like this sh- shadowy hooded image. That's scary. That's kind of like pointing at them. At the same time, like another door flies off the hinges. And then basically the next morning, 7 a.m., they leave the house again. The car works totally fine. And on January 14th, 1976, the Lutzes, all of them, leave the house and uh, – That's it. That's it. They yeah, just they, moved out. They just moved out 28 days later. Wow. You know Le- – okay. They left everything behind. That's the other – I was just about to ask that. That's very convincing to me because if you were making it up, you would not leave everything behind because like it's expensive to get new stuff. It is. Yeah. You have to think practically with this stuff, you know, like you do. But remember, they were only there 28 days. So how much did they really buy? And they never kind of, they claim that they like never left the house and they always stayed in the house. Well, that was another weird thing. I, what, I, oh, really? Yeah. They, they said they very rarely would leave and stuff. Well, it sounds like it sucked them in. Yeah. There's definitely something going on there. Okay. But, but what happens next? Like, cause you said. Okay. So what happens after that? All right. So let's fast forward. So that's January 14th, 1976. And then right. in the coming months, um, psychics and, you know, investigators and demonologists. But who, who contacted them? Who, who contacted who? Like, what is there like a hotline, a demonologist hotline? Like, like yeah, you know um, what I mean? Yeah. Well, through the, the book, like George is claiming that he's trying to get in touch with okay. these psychics so wherever. Like, Okay. But I assume word got out, and then about a month or two later... Um, well, that's going to make neighbors talk. Like, why'd they move out? Yeah. Like uh, that. The, yeah, the other thing is, like, the neighbors never claimed that they heard doors slamming and oh. doors coming off their hinges and yeah. things like that. And, you know, you and again, there's, like, a lot of storms in the book, but nothing ever really happens to the other houses. Neighbors only, aren't... You know what, though? I'm going to tell you something about neighbors. They don't always know. They're yeah. kind of dumb sometimes. Yeah. Uh, except I some mean, of us listening, like the, we're not. The but way, like, it, yeah. <laughs> but the way it makes it seem is like it would be crazy, like marching bands and you know. <laughs> Maybe, I don't know. I don't know. Okay. But anyway, February eighteenth, nineteen seventy six. About a month later, they get this like whole group of you know psychics and demonologists and parapsychologists and 
crazy people and all, all right. that. And they all come to the house <laughs> and they start doing seances. Um, the Long Island Ghost Hunter. Yeah, Long Island Ghost Hunter was there. <laughs> long-haired you know, Ghost Hunter. Yeah, you know, long, long relative of Tim. Yeah, long, long I, I changed his name. <laughs> I know. <laughs> From okay. the long hair, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so uh, many of the psychics claim, you know, and these people claim that they felt sick. Yeah. Some of them left the seances. Okay. They did feel that there was energies in there. Um, they they thought, and this was, again, that there were three entities in the house. Mm. Okay. They thought there were just two ordinary run-of-the-mill ghosts that were there. All right. and Like a woman and a, a boy, yeah. they thought. And then they thought that the hooded figure or Jody the pig, the imaginary pig, was a demon. Ooh. They thought it was actually possessed by a demon. All right. So there's three – they claim that there's three entities, the two regular ghosts and then a demon. Uh, they did another seance the following day, 3.30 in the morning. Nothing happened. Nothing was produced. And some of the psychics and demonologists and parapsychologists claimed that the house was clean. Did they clean it? Did they bless it? Did they? I mean, I guess. I mean, they they could have. All right. So what about this book? Like, how'd that happen? All right. So so after that, the the Lutzes moved out. Mm -hmm. They claim that some stuff still happened to them after they had left. Oh, kind of a trap. The energy traveled. Right. And then. Did they have health issues? I I think they died in the 2000s. So I right. think they lived another 20 something Sometimes years. Sometimes I, I know that that can happen. Yeah. Like if you're really afflicted by bad energy, you can have like really bad health issues. For yeah, a while. I think he died of heart disease and she might have died of emphysema or something like that. Okay. But later on, it, it wasn't like right, right off right, the right. bat. Mm-hmm. Uh, but then they moved to California and then it was fine. Nothing ever happened to them again. No. And then the theory on that is like they crossed like water, bodies of water and Demons can't cross bodies of water. Oh. Okay. So that's right. there. So now, all right, what do you do? You just, you put $80,000 into the house. Yeah. You know, a lot of things going on with your business. The IRS, you just up and left your business. Um, he might have been in a whirlwind of hurt financially. Sure. I mean, I, I assume you left everything, right? Uh, and that might also be why they left everything. Maybe, you know, maybe things they bought, they, uh, maybe they bought they on credit or, they yeah, or maybe they had the creditors after them, so it didn't matter anyway. They were desperate. Right. But you would leave like your kids' toys. You know what I mean? Like you'd leave like a bed. Like you'd leave clothes. Yeah. I mean, did they leave clothes? I mean, I don't know. They, I mean, they could have packed suitcases. That's what and I mean. Things. I don't know. You that know. I don't know. Right. They yeah. could have brought some stuff. It was a van, so they could have. Right. They claimed it was a they van. They left it in yeah, a van. They said it was a van. Yeah. So anyway, um, at th- at this time when they move out to to California, they contacted Lutz. George Lutz contacted Defoe's attorney, the guy that did the murders. Okay. okay, so we're going all the way back. So now we're going to go back again. To Ronald Defoe and now, his attorney. Where is Ronald Defoe right now? I mean, in jail. I believe he's in jail at the time. All right. The attorney, William Weber, claims that they came to them, the Lutzes came to him, all right. wanting to write a book. So George is like, hey, lawyer of Ronald Defoe, let's, let's, let's do something here. Right, because William Weber, the lawyer of Defoe, was at the time working on a book for his client. For Ronald. For Ronald, the one that did the murders, yeah. Oh, okay. So George is like, hey, well, let me tell you this. Maybe putting the seeds into his head that maybe it was a demonic force that did it and, you know, Defoe might be able to clear his name or whatever. Right. But, hey, let me tell you what happened to me as well. And the lawyer, William Weber, really kind of thought he was full of it and yeah. did not sign the, the con- did not try for him uh, to get that book. And um, then he went to this other guy, Jay Anson, who did write the book, yes. who was known for writing these types of books. Mm-hmm. And Jay Anson took on his, took on the story and made this massive, you know, it's huge, huge selling, yeah, yeah it's huge success. Selling movie success. And- it's a movie. Um, I, I, I watched some of the movie. I didn't watch the full movie. Obviously, there was a lot of differences mm-hmm. between the movie and the book. Right. Uh, you know, they did a. They don't. They match up, but not that well. Well, it's a movie. Yeah, it's a movie. It's right. Entertainment. But you know, here's the thing. After after reading this, I don't. Know, what what do I think? Well, what's where's the house now? So okay, so the house now is people live in it. Really? Yeah. And have they? They say it's fine, or what? Yeah. They no one. I mean, there's never been any other claims. You know, I'm sure you could probably find some claims if you really went down a rabbit hole on the web. Yeah. But since the Lutzes moved out. And since that, I guess that seance in February of 1976, nobody claims anything major. 
Like hmm. no, nothing has been claimed. Okay. And Which, this, the house has been sold a couple of times, I believe. Very under, under market value. Still they, under market still value. Still under market value. So what do you think about this? You read the book. You did all this research. What do you think? I, I'll be honest. This is what I really think. I, I think that there was – I think, yes. I Do I think there was some sort of paranormal activity going on there? Sure, I believe it. I've seen it myself when we when we did work with Tim, you know, mm-hmm. and I when a couple of places, the Riddle House. And yeah. How, I mean, so I can't you've say that that didn't happen. In my house. Like, yeah. you've seen it here. You've yeah. seen it, yeah. Yeah, I believe we have a podcast ghost. I right. Mean, I believe that guy tried, the guy from the Riddle House tried to choke us. Yes. When you're taping the podcast. Yes. So I do believe that things went on in the house. Yeah. You know, the, the, actually, the son, Chris, um, oh, yeah. later the on, yeah, one of the kids... This is the only one that would talk about it. The other two did never talked about it. He claims that it was a lot of it was made up. The the son, remember, he was also seven, but he at the time of the of the event, he's saying it was elaborated upon. He said it was elaborate elaborated upon. Yes, okay. uh, he said like the green slime that never happened. There was like some like green film that at one point you know came out, but it wasn't anything like shown. Okay, you know, like it's all over weird. the halls. It's still yeah. weird though. But it's an old house, you know. Green, yeah, I, I lived in lots of old houses. Green things never came out of the walls. No, no, he said it was. I think it was like dripping or something from the oh. ceiling or something. He, uh, he does say that he do, did feel energy at the time. Mm. He does say that you know shadowy figures did appear, right. but most of it was sensationalized yeah. to, to sell the book and to sell the movie. Right. Uh, he he was not. I mean, again, it was his stepfather. Maybe they had issues with between each other mm. later on. Uh, he does not give a favorable account of George. He said he was looking for fame. He mm. was looking for money. He's got some issues he there. Wanted, he wanted to be the star of the show. He yeah, wanted to tell- I, yes, he's selfish. Yes. Yeah, yes. So this, the the stepson did say all that. I have the stepson uh, picture actually here. Okay. And he feels like he's, you know, he feels, to me, when I look at his, hold on, I got to find his picture. Okay. To me, when I look at his picture, and what's his name again? Uh, that would be Chris. Chris's picture he looks very, I guess, down to earth. Like he just doesn't want any of this, but he also wants to be – like his name's important to him and he wants to reclaim that. So I can see somebody he's, – he's got, he's got a red and blue aura and to me he just wants to be like, this is what I think. This is my take. I don't want to be labeled as a shyster or anything like that. I can see that. Yeah. With him. Okay. That makes sense. Like he just wants to like let you know, here. Let me level with you. This is my account, and let's move on. You know, like that. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I mean, to me, I don't. I don't honestly. All this stuff, I don't believe it. You know, I, I okay. don't believe like the levitation stuff. I don't believe. I don't believe the green slime stuff. I don't believe. Um, you know, the faces changing, uh, doors flying off the hinges. You know, I, I feel as a lot of it was exaggerated. I have a picture of the house. It's been, by the way, like resided and, yeah. and totally, and they, they even changed the address so people couldn't find it and stuff. But I have a picture of the house at the time. They said all the stuff was going on. It, it's after the murders, but, and it's right after I think the, the Lutz has moved out. Okay. Um. So I have a picture of the house and, all right, sometimes I have to do this. Like if I was approaching this, like a client gave me this picture. I was like, what do you think of my new house? I just, <laughs> this is what I would say. I would say it needs it needs something like it need it feels unsettled to me now without even knowing what ha- the tragedy that happened there with all those with the shooting deaths and whatnot to me the house feels very sad and it feels very unsettled it's interesting because during the podcast you called it a building yes you said that and it was kind of like your little slip like you didn't mean to say that that's exactly what it feels like to me it feels like a building it doesn't feel like a home at all. This house does not feel like a home. It feels like a building. Houses have energy. Um, if you've ever walked, you know, you do real estate or something, you can, you can feel it. Some places you don't want to leave. Some places you have an affection for. Some places you're like, mm, I don't like it here. It feels un- uncomfortable for me. This place feels like it's reaching. Like it wants somebody to see it and understand it. It feels misplaced. It feels like it just shouldn't be there. So my thought looking at everybody is... There was definitely some sort of foul energy there, whether it's attached to the land or it's just something that Ronald Defoe created when he um, went into that mindset and something came and infused him with evil to do the horrible things that he did to his family and maybe lingered for a while afterwards. Perhaps it's something to do with that. I feel like a lot of... 
it actually makes me very sad because like kids died there and that mom. And I feel like they were probably just trying to communicate or they just wanted to be heard or say hello or something like that. They probably needed to be helped cross over, which can happen sometimes. You have to light a candle and say, you are, listen, you're dead and you have to go to the light now. You know, that's something you can do for souls that you might feel are a little stuck. Hey, go to the light now. You're not supposed to be here. Go with your mom. You and your mom go to the light. So I feel that that's what was going on. And for the purpose of selling a book or since, you know, since uh, sensationalizing it, he made it like evil. Da, 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 da. I'm not saying that. So it's interesting when the psychics and all of them came and said, there's okay, there's like two run of the mill ghosts, which really aren't bad. Ghosts aren't bad. They're right. just people that hang out because they're comfortable there and they usually don't bother you. And it's just like, sometimes you feel like they're roommates or something. It's like not a big deal. But then like that evil energy that they're going to call a demon. I mean, you can call whatever you want. To me, it feels like that is the lingering of Ronald Defoe and that energy or whatever he created there, that vortex of not good. And maybe it did pass or dissipate or something. And maybe George was influenced by it. But what saved him possibly was his thought like, oh, I could capitalize off all this and make some money. And so it's kind of like both are true. I think like both are true. I think both are true and both were miscommunicated. All right. That's what I get. I'll tell you one thing. I wouldn't live there. Yeah. If if you you said, hey, you could do the KYA, (laughs) if you could do the KYA next Halloween special from the Amityville house, I would say no. I would say no too. Yeah. A hundred percent. Yeah. I'm not, I wouldn't step foot in there. I don't there. mess with that stuff. Yeah. I don't mess with the demonic stuff. Yeah. Because like I do believe that evil is a thing and it's something that you have to choose. You got to choose yeah. good every day. All right. Wow. That's uh, crazy. Yeah. It's, it's crazy. So we want to know what you think about this. You yes. think it's true? You think it's not true? Yeah. And we'll put up the maybe the pictures of those people th- throughout the week uh, so you can see their, try to see their auras. One crazy picture though we yeah, have to one, talk about. Yeah. Before we end. Is there, you said paranormal investigators went yes. after the Lutzes moved out right, and they caught a photo. And they got this photo. Yeah. And holy crap people. Okay. There was no one else in the house and it's a photo of a little boy peeking around a door. It's very clear and it looks exactly like the little boy, the little Defoe boy that was killed by his brother. Yeah, exactly. And the people that say it's not true said, oh, no, it was the photographer. It was one of the photographer, the photographer taking it posed and took its own picture or whatever. I mean, you decide, but it looks like a little boy's face to me. It looks exactly like um, the actual little boy. Yeah. Just something we'll put up. You can take a look at that. It's it's very, very upsetting what happened there. And I, I hate that a tragedy of like, you know, a family was killed and then they made this whole kind of like, I don't know, sens- sensationalized story off of it. That's kind of sad, but yeah. All right. All right. Well, we want to hear what you have to think about this. You know, this podcast is for you and about you. We want to hear your thoughts and opinions. You all take care. If you want to be the most interesting person at the cocktail party, well, hop on over and listen to the Brain Candy Podcast. Our award-winning content will have you laughing while you're learning. We read all the best articles, books, and studies, and keep up with new TV shows, documentaries, and pop culture. And then we cram it all into two shows a week. Conspiracy theories, cannibal rabbits, unsolved mysteries, the history of the Walkman. There's something for everyone. The Brain Candy Podcast. Find our link in the show notes. Or simply search for the Brain Candy Podcast on your podcast app.